so I've literally So most of it's gone then. Do you know, I, I always say I, I don't think I ever chose to be an artist, I think, and I don't know if this is common with lots of artists, but I just think you either do it or you don't, and it, it's, it's not an easy lifestyle choice. I just was obsessed and compelled to create in some form. So as a young child, I was always painting, drawing, creating, something, very similar themes, weirdly, uh, to what I do now. Um, and then just went through the whole art school process, traditionally, you know, the whole educational system, and then never stopped. When I was 15, I had meningitis, and for 24 hours I had a, a in a comatose state, uh, I had lots of repetitive dreams and a constant stream of imagery, which I still use as a starting point for a lot of my art. My approach to art is very experimental, uh, and often when I start painting, I don't know quite what the end result's going to be. So I just throw myself into into my painting. I think that's that's how I've got to where I am. I enjoy the challenge of trying to make uh, beauty out of less beautiful starting point. My art's completely dictated by my mood. So strangely, if I'm in a good mood, I tend not to be overly productive. So it's if. I'm being slightly troubled by something, that's when I'm more likely to head out to the studio. But from, I, I work on lots of pieces at the same time so that I can attack lots of pieces. Um, almost like a warm up as well. I might have some pieces that I just use just to throw paint at, and then there'll be other paintings that I'm then trying to refine and finish. Uh, so, no, no routine whatsoever. The artist that most inspires me right now, is, I would think, is probably Robert Rauschenberg just because of that multimedia approach, uh, finding uh, resources from, uh, from all over the place, basically, um, and then trying to bring them together to make a coherent image. I think one of my biggest fears is uh, to be uh, ramming a message down someone's throat artistically. Uh, so I, I want them to, be, to have that freedom to interpret my paintings as they choose. But a lot of it is about trying to work out um, where I've fit in in this world. I, I often, I'm not trying to make a statement, but I'm trying to ask questions. So what I want the viewer to do is start trying to interpret what's going on in my paintings. Uh, sometimes I leave little visual clues, favourite themes or favourite uh, icons or imagery. So uh, a lot to do with circuses and monkeys, that's a very common theme. With circuses, I like, and fairgrounds, uh, I like the deviance of them that they uh, forge a very subtle line between uh, good and evil. So even fairground music I think is really haunting uh, and that sense of clowns uh, that are quite inviting and quite interesting but there's always that undercurrent of uh, something bad might happen. So I, I like that as a metaphor. The war imagery started, uh, again it, it rolled on from uh, surviving meningitis and that, that battle of surviving meningitis. So I started to look at battle scenes or ideas of battle um, and therefore a very obvious starting point was war um, and then I became quite intrigued by uh, war imagery which in itself there's a lot of war imagery uh, that we see is actually uh, propaganda recreated in a studio and I liked that sense of history I like the idea of putting my art through an accelerated ageing process. So again, there, there was just that crossover and that tie-in. And then the more I investigated it, I, I realised that um, my grandfather had had some of the most humbling experiences during the war and he'd actually put his uh, stories down on tape. Uh, so I was able to directly reference those. Uh, and part of his thing was uh, that he was a Japanese prisoner of war. And the whole Japanese Thing that really intrigued me, but in particular, there's a Japanese art form called kintsugi, if I'm pronouncing it correctly, where if something's if a piece of ceramic has been damaged or broken, they mend it with gold. So I, I liked that idea of damaging my pictures and then healing it with gold. So that kind of became a metaphor as well for that that process that I'd been through, um, but also referencing my grandfather uh, and referencing 
you know, lots of people that had uh, made sacrifices during the war. Do you know, lo lots of the uh, concepts have already been created in my head, so uh, I, don't, I don't stop thinking, I don't stop collecting images, uh, either in my head or physically, so I'm a hoarder of images. Um, I've got boxes and boxes and piles and piles of images that I'll, I'll go to um, that mean something to me or um, can be used. But then the, really the first thing I then do is create a painting so I'm not looking at a blank canvas. And then I might rip that, you know, parts of that painting back, keep adding to it, ripping back, adding to it. Um, yeah, until you, you hit the point where you're satisfied with the painting. So I don't always use, uh, you know, uh, traditionally common tools. So I'll often uh, attack my paintings with a hammer, a chisel, a sander, um, and, and so on. Recently, I've actually started uh, setting fire to pictures. So uh, using lighter fluid um, to see what happens. Uh, I have this thing, theory that if a painting's not quite right, then I'll happily do something to it uh, to try and make it work. And if that then completely ruins it, then nothing's lost.